<laughs> we're about to get so fashion right now. Yay. It's about to get fashion. Uh-huh. Sorry, yeah. not as cool. No, we all look cute. Welcome back, everybody. We have a special guest today. The lovely, the talented, the fashion icon himself, Aww, Jake Thompson. Shucks. Hi, everyone. <laughs> hey, guys. What up? Hi. Uh, I'm such a fan. Thank you so much for having me. A little background about Jake. He does social media. Yes. You. He's a writer. Yes. He's a director. Yes. He's a fashion icon. <laughs> I mean, I can't call myself that, so. <laughs> thank you. He's like an actor, too. An actor, too. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yes, yes, I can't forget about yes, that. Yes, like, cast yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> so so tell them a little bit about what you do. I write and produce my own sort of comedic commentary on pop culture. I make parodies of like Big Little Lies, Game of Thrones, anything really on Netflix actually. Okay, and his recent one is Bird Box and it is hilarious. <laughs> Go cool. check it out. Thank you. We'll put the link in the bio. Aw. <laughs> yeah, and so I just, I edit them. I have a friend that kind of shoots them with me. And beyond that, I just love taking things that are mainstream and putting my weird queer read on them yes. and then uh, putting them all over the internet. I'm like, I mean, YouTube is great for a reason, so. This episode, we wanted to talk about fashion. Yes. Um, and Tony and I couldn't think of a better guest to have on Aww. for fashion Aww. than Jake, who <laughs> literally coined the term fashion. 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 Out. The angle that I wanted to take it from is that to me fashion is really important to me it's a passion of mine Mm -hmm. um, and it to me it is a visual representation of of who you are how you feel that day it's like a superhero putting on their costume yeah that's that's how I feel so growing up fashion meant different things to me but it was always important that was mm. the one consistent thing. Yeah. So for you growing up, did fashion play a part in your life? And, and when? how early do you remember it playing a part? I'm so grateful that you guys chose me uh, <laughs> because, yes, I didn't realize it at the time, but fashion has actually like saved my life in a lot of ways. I feel like it's walkable art. You get to be who, which character you want to be every single day. And so I definitely always felt like... Uh, growing up throughout the years. I mean, I, I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I grew up in the Midwest, and it's funny, if you look at old pictures of yourself as a kid, it's like, you knew there was like this little star trying to break out, but it's like, <laughs> no, no, same. but you're like, oh my gosh, like, I'm in the closet, like, yeah. in the Midwest, so it's like, <laughs> you know, but yeah, so definitely throughout my life, and I feel like probably similar to you, it's like, there was someone always trying to break out. Was that something that was like supported? Or was it something that you kind of had to keep to yourself? Oh yeah, okay, so this is really crazy. I mean, I feel really fortunate. My parents are the most open-minded, progressive people in the world, so it's like, they've always been like super supportive what before i was out of the closet and then after i came out obviously but it's like it was more like my own thing i think it's like such an i think coming out is such an intimate experience to every individual and it was i was harder on myself i think than my parents actually were and so it's kind of this thing where it's like for some reason it was mainstream like media everybody was telling me that it wasn't okay or something there was something wrong with it so it's like that's kind of where the limitations of expressing myself through fashion so to go off that how did you dress when did you come out first and then how did you dress yourself before coming out versus (laughs) versus when you came okay (laughs) oh my gosh it's like the 10-year challenge is real (laughs) but like okay so i came out when i was 19 yeah to all my friends and family like it was like in one i was like i guess this is my coming out party like (laughs) it was like started out as a party by the end of the night i was like in a bathtub with like my sister and I was like I'm gay and she was like oh my god amazing you know <laughs> so uh that's awesome yeah it was amazing that's um awesome. what was the second part of the question um, how did you dress before <laughs> were, were you like typical midwest oh my god oh my gosh because <laughs> I can keep my phone in there yeah <laughs> keep so many things and then I can wow. put stuff in the loop they were like, <laughs> it's like a utility. The yeah. Lee Pipes, the Lee Pipes uh, carpenter jeans. Yeah, <laughs> carpenter this jeans is, were the truth back then. Yes. This is over my head. <laughs> Pencils, pens, all that. Right there. Pencils. <laughs> right there. It's like your whole backpack on your leg. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so it's really hard to describe. It's like weird looking at your old self because you just want to like hug them so badly and Same. be like, just be yourself but i you know what's crazy is yeah. just to go off of that is yeah. like if you you can pull 
all these childhood photos of myself and I look like I do today. Oh, cool. But it was, an, it was when, you know, the part where you're trying to fit in with everybody yeah. and I'm scared in the closet. Yeah. That's when my appearance changed to more feminine. So it's interesting because I, you can look at the child in me, which is the most pure, mm-hmm. and be like, that's who you are. And then I lost myself for a little bit and then now I'm back. Uh, now you're back better than ever yeah so but for you you it was a little limited i mean i think that there's something like people always talk about the pressures that are put on i mean this is like in the total gender binary but like women have pressures put on them that i can't say i can't live that life you know but it's like as far as boy i think boys equally have a lot of pressures put on them in terms of masculinity so it was like fashion in general like no offense but like men's fashion isn't as fun as women's fashion i feel like sometimes i agree with that because even if you look at like fancy events yeah because sometimes i'll think about that if i'm watching like an award show or red carpet it's like girls get to do so many things and guys it's like you're wearing a tuxedo or a tuxedo right you know what i mean like girls can do so many different things change the color of your tie right like i said (laughs) like otherwise you look crazy or whatever people think so i agree with you on that right and it was like the access that you have in the midwest it's like either thrift stores or like target so i really (laughs) did kind of grow up wearing like target t t-shirts and like but it's funny if you if you look back yeah it was like one was like an ashley simpson shirt or like harry potter so it was like clearly there was like somebody magical in there but it was like (laughs) yeah compared to the way i dress now it's it's like i don't i don't know her i don't remember that person (laughs) do you feel like your fashion has changed from more like how how would you describe your style I would say that fashion in general is more of a mindset. It's like, I've always, like in my mind, I'm like, I am killing it. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm strutting down the street, even when I was wearing my little like Ashley Simpson t-shirts and uh, pop punk shirts. And it's like- and You hear the music in your head. Right. Oh my goodness, yeah. I was just, I was literally telling Tony <laughs> that I was walking Yossi with Beyonce's live album <sighs> in my ear, just like- And you were slaying extra hard. Oh my goodness, I was walking so hard. Oh. my. St- Stomps were just—I was feeling myself. Uh, that's like the La La Land we should have gotten. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, I, and yeah, fashion is also so musical and sonic too. So I guess I think that even when I had a limited limited resources, mm. I was this person. You know what I mean? And I just now I have access and the confidence to actually like be it all the time if that makes sense yeah it's almost like when lady gaga talks about like she was famous before she was famous right right right. it's like it's like you tell yourself at night like i'm into fashion (laughs) are you into high fashion do you like do you do you like the high-end design designers and stuff because i feel like a lot of that is misunderstood and I'm one of the yeah. people that misunderstands it. Yeah. Because yes. a lot of times, like, my perception of designer stuff is just, like, you're try- you're just wearing that because it costs a lot. Yeah. And me and her have this, like, kind of debate all the time where I'm like, are you buying that because it's so-and-so's thing? Right. Or are you buying that because you think it's worth what it costs? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So. And my rebuttal to that a lot of the times is, to me, again, fashion is art. It's wearable art. Mm. So I don't just buy designer just because it's designer. Right. Like I, there's there's Gucci pieces I hate. There's Louis pieces that I hate. There's <laughs> Dior pieces that I hate. I yeah. hate certain pieces. I don't like everything that they do. Right. But the pieces that I do love, when you look at the craftsmanship of the piece, yeah. from the sewing to the materials used to all of that, and you break it down, that's why I love it. Because right. I look at what, you know, what the designer put into it. Totally. From, like down to the details. Totally. And at the end of the day, too, if you don't think you're influenced by these high fashion designers, you yep. are very much so you mistaken. You got another thing coming. Because everything <laughs> that you buy from Target to it's Walmart to Forever 21, yeah. all that stuff H&M. was taken from... The, the high-end designers yeah it's like devil wears prada like is like yeah, yes. it laid it out for us yeah. it's like the, her ugly lumpy sweater like actually started from like Givenchy. exactly <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but i mean i guess yes i'm a fan of high fashion i will say though like because i was raised right in the midwest like i would never be able to rationalize like if i ever came in into like tons of money i still would never spend that kind of money on clothing Uh i love the idea of like yes being influenced by these kind of like higher gods of fashion but i love then trying to find it vintage retro 
thrifted. And like putting, yeah, putting I love it putting together. pieces together. But yeah, mm. so I guess I don't know if that answered that. But no, to absolutely. me, it seems, it seems like from what I've seen, I guess you kind of said it too, as far as like a thrift store aspect. It seems like more of what you're doing is about like what you're making and it doesn't really matter yeah. where it came from it's just like i got this and i got this right. and these go together and it's right. kind of like it could come from party city for all we know like totally. it doesn't matter well and the funny thing is like high fashion to me is so hilarious like it's so <laughs> like it emotes so much joy like when i see something like tilda swinton wears well, mm. like i'm just like i want to wear it too like yeah, it's yeah. I think it's performance and like what you said too, just like the craftsmanship and like the art, like everything Solange wears. I'm like, it's, oh my it's goodness, you yes. know, it's like on a whole other level. Let me talk about a style icon, she definitely. Yeah, yeah. And I just think it's like, if someone made these ridiculous, like high collared, shoulder padded outfits for us to play around in, so <laughs> might as well, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so with, with that said too, like, do you ever, I mean, I, I'm sure it happens, but do you ever get like judged by people like when you're out and about and like, what what is your response to that? Like, how do you, do you like, does yeah. it affect you or are you just like, whatever? Do you want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't, I, cause for me, I don't, I don't get that type of attention Right. for me yeah. when I'm wearing my clothing right. and stuff. But I feel like with you, your approach is a lot, is a lot louder than yeah. mine. <laughs> One of these so. is all like the <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> No, I get it. I know that I'm like a walking, like nanny, like replica. You know what I mean? Like, I'm Friend very, dresser, yeah, right. I'm very, I'm very aware of it. Um, <laughs> when I was, when I was, I will say like the difference 10 years makes when I first came out of the closet and I was really like expression, expressing myself in like new ways and like mm -hmm. probably around the time I was like 21, 22, I really like fed into kind of like that hysteria. Like I would always be like, oh, like they're talking about me or like that person's like, but then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, do I think I'm Nicole Richie? And like <laughs> everyone cares so much about like what I'm wearing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I think that you actively participate in that sort of kind of negativity mm -hmm. if you want it. So like, I feel like now, if there are haters, like you yeah. just throw on the hater blockers totally. and like keep it, keep it moving. Cause it's like, well, whether they're like in awe or maybe they don't even like care who I am. You know what I mean? It's mm. like all of those things are just like, at the end of the day, I still have to be myself. And you know. Do, so do you think that it ever stops you when you're wearing something like kind of out there? Uh, do you ever think it like stops you from or stops people from approaching you? Like do you, does it ever make you unapproachable? Ooh, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. If anything, I get a lot of joy from like elderly white women who are white. just like who are just like I love your outfit. Where would you get it? You know what I mean? And yeah. then all that's, of a sudden it just like breaks this. I'm like <laughs> is this like queer eye like on <laughs> on like a very personal level? Yeah. It really is. I mean, it's very it's it's definitely um, a conversation starter. I mean, there's multiple times I'm out and somebody will comment on a piece that I have, whether yeah. it's a jacket or a shoe or a bag, yeah. you know, and, and it it's just finding that common ground is another way to relate to people right. and stuff like that. So. And maybe it's easier in, in Los Angeles, right? Like Probably. when no, I first, when 100, I first, a hundred, <laughs> like when I first moved here, like I was at the grocery store and there was like a drag queen walking around. There was like next to like a nuclear family, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, I feel like no one here here like bats, bats and I, I know. you know definitely yeah. it's definitely different when I first got here, I felt like if I wore something, like there was this blue jacket that she got me from H&M. Wait, can yeah. I preface this for a second here? <laughs> okay, so Ooh. when I have been in my group of friends, this like fashion shepherd, I guess <laughs> you can say, um, a lot of people that have moved here literally have hit me up and been like, I, can you help me? And like help me change my style once they've moved here. And that's awesome. I love that. That's like cool. taking somebody shopping is one of my favorite things to do. And so with Tony, he didn't really necessarily say this to me. He wasn't like, help me. I literally said, you if need we're help. going out, you need help. You need to take off those carpenters jeans. I am going you know to what? help you. Tough love. And I am here for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's family. <laughs> and he was not receptive at first, but he did it. But he hesitated so hard on this. And you guys, it was the most basic blue bomber jacket. Like, so many people, anybody wears that. But for him, that was Aww, so... He was branching out. I know, but it was, like super loud. it was so loud to him. Because, so for me, like, dressing has always been more of like a... Like I was saying before, like, it's been a tactical thing where, like, I'm not really trying to be seen. Like, yeah. And I used to just wear kind of black or 
gray, whatever. So yeah, like, yeah, or like dark blue if I was gonna wear a color, but right. it was always like to not be seen. Like I freaked out about people oh. looking at me. So like you yeah. having people approach you, like I was trying to not do that. You was oh. trying to so live like, in the shadows. Yeah, like oh so God. she got this blue jacket and yeah. I was wearing it. I was like, I feel like everybody's looking at you right now. She was like, dude, nobody's looking at you. And I was like, I just feel like everybody's <laughs> looking at me. And, well, yeah, and, and that's because we went out in matching jackets. Like I had a black one oh, and he cute. had the blue one. One, yeah. and like there's photo we'll, we'll show yeah, that photo I gotta see this picture. <laughs> and i had like yeah. red shoes on and this blue jacket oh, i mean that was like there's too much there's too much color on me right now Aww. and i felt like everybody was looking at me so i totally get it yeah so it's, it's just crazy to me to like see somebody that is just like yeah i'm gonna wear this leopard print suit today and give zero f- it's like yeah. that because I, I could never <laughs> i could never do it just a tool that i think of sometimes i'm like most times right like there's like a however many people live in this world like the likelihood of running into like a hater again on the street is probably not gonna happen so like i'm like yeah. you're welcome like you I'll got s- this like you got this cool new right. like thing to talk about That's i also true. think that evolves like i feel yeah. like now as we get older yeah we don't care I oh my gosh, yeah. I'm yeah. going to wear what I want, right. and it, whatever, if you have something to say about it, congratulations. Yeah, and, like, it like, does get better. Like, you do, it like... It really does. You really you, start to just be like, oh, wow, like, eye on the prize. But know? even, <laughs> I mean, I feel like even for Tony, I... I totally. You I'm care, definitely stepping it up. You definitely care it's less. It's actually funny. Yeah. Yeah. You I, definitely step it up. It's interesting because I've always kind of thought of you as, like, a stylish person. So, oh. Oh you know goodness. what I mean? Oh, my goodness! Yeah. <laughs> the truth is coming out. But, yeah, I mean, and especially, yeah, I've always known, like, the... Me- when I first met you, I was instantly like, yep, you get it. You know, like, I hate to be like, like, oh, like, straight guys. Like, I immediately, like, knock them down one peg in, like, fashion. But I thought, <laughs> I just, like, I've always seen you as, like, a stylish guy. So oh, okay. it's never been, you know, so. Yeah. It, it has been a thing, like, I think I've evolved since living here. Yeah. Because, I, again, I'm around people that care more about it. Yeah. Because, like, when I was in the Midwest, it was the same thing. Like, me and all my friends were just, like, dudes. Right. And we just wore carpenter's jeans. and Right. Like, hoodies and right. just didn't give it so out here it's like okay because people are more about that it kind of has made me be like okay i can try some stuff and like do some stuff and yeah like, nobody's gonna be like talking because they're no, gonna be like totally. oh that's cool like i also like that and i also do that like, right. oh, all right cool no right but even still when i go home it's still like okay look at this guy <laughs> thinks he's famous so it's, <laughs> uh, i hate that about the midwest when everyone's like oh you're so la now and i'm like yeah. uh like says you who will like literally never move so <laughs> what, what basis do you have on like what is so la <laughs> no totally you know. so another thing another point that i wanted to touch on is that after coming out I started to just morph my morph my style to more more of a masculine approach, and it came in like tears. Yeah. Like, and you can it tell came, by the haircuts. Yeah, that's literally <laughs> what I was just about to say. You can yeah. tell from my haircuts. Yeah. First, I cut my hair, but I was still doing this like feminine um, swoop. That Bieber, a little yeah. baby gay. A little, yes, I was yeah. a baby gay. I was. Uh, I, I was know wearing, that haircut. Like, I was wearing yeah. like hoop earrings Death and like for lipstick cutie. still. Yeah. And then as it like went through, I was like, oh, this is still not me. To me. Fashion also has to be comfortable for you. Yeah. And not in the sense of like comfortable shoes or cup, but just you need to feel right. Mm. Every time I wore anything feminine, I was just like, Ugh. like Aww. it was literally like uh, like bugs crawling on me. That's Aww. how I felt like Aww. the whole time. So with you, do you feel like as you've gotten older, you've leaned more into your feminine side? And did that take time for you to be comfortable with that yeah it's i mean there was always like little signs there right like as a kid i would wear like a towel to be like ariel from the little mermaid <laughs> but like i don't know maybe that was like a whole other form of expression but like <laughs> as soon as i came out for sure like i was like whoa like gonna only be shopping in like the woman's clearance rack at h&m you yeah. know just because i like we talked kind of about earlier like i've always thought women's fashion uh what women wear on the red carpet like i've always been so mesmerized by it and once i finally was like oh i I can I can be like the reality that I want to be. I definitely started to lean into the femininity 
Uh, for sure. But yeah, it's all a journey. Like I've, I've even like recently been kind of, uh, our friend Christina, like we were texting the other day just about like fashion and style. And like, uh-huh. she's also like a fashionista, I would say. And she says that like, I want to always be like a chameleon of fashion. Look at her. Look you know at, what I wow. mean? Yeah. <laughs> like not being able to ever be defined like by like, it's cool to be recognized as like a fashion uh, stylish person, but, um, it's fun to like lean into masculine and feminine on different days. Is like I never want people to kind of like expect yeah like something. know what I'm gonna hit them with next right. you know <laughs> like the nanny today like I could do I don't know like killing Eve tomorrow so yeah, yeah. you know but See, yeah I'm kind of like the like the opposite of that where I I want to have because when I was in high school I had all these like in cool clothes mm-hmm. and then they weren't anymore and I yeah. was kind of like out here yeah. I was like my goal would be to have something that I can just wear forever that nobody ever is like well you're still wearing that like yeah. <laughs> so I kind of lean into this t-shirt thing because I'm like this will always be a thing yeah, yeah yeah and maybe like change out the shoes or like I don't know the jacket but I like the idea of having like a standard thing that yeah people kind of can be like that's his thing like he does that you know see that's... I'm actually but I'm with Tony on that one yeah. like I like when people are like oh that's an angel jacket yeah those are angel shoes like yeah. I like having uh like a, a style that... that's cool because I mean it's, it's taking a whole damn lifetime to get yes. that <laughs> yes yeah I've I've always wanted to play around with that idea of like what would my uniform be like if I was like a character in Daria like you know and it's like that would be cool to think of of like would the animator have to draw a leopard print suit like right. for that person every time but i don't know if you ever feel this way too that's so cool that you said like an angel jacket or like a tony like a tony shoe or something but it's like i've always felt like and maybe you guys are like this too but i feel like an extension of movies like i love reinterpreting like a character that I love on like Game of Thrones or from Romy and Michelle and then like finding like the real world object that I would wear to be that person. 100% like I I grew up watching like a lot of action movies so I think that's where my like tactical thing comes from like I always thought dudes that had like a badass jacket and like some cool ass jeans and some cool ass boots that they could just like pull guns out of like I always (laughs) thought that that was tight so it was like when I got older I always wanted to wear stuff like that but even at the time like in high school people were wearing like puffy coats and stuff like mm-hmm. that was what was mm-hmm. the thing and i wanted to wear like a biker jacket and everybody was just like okay yeah like what are you doing like you a girl right. and i was just like damn i said they called you like, a girl for a biker jacket <clears throat> well because it was like shorter because it was like it fit oh, like a right. jacket you know oh. like like a jacket supposed to wild not, like, times of baggy ass <laughs> 90s jacket. you know what i'm saying uh, people are so boring about gender <laughs> yeah so it, that, yeah that's another thing i yeah. definitely would say like i was influenced by movies too for sure but it was just always like the renegade yeah. motorcycle shoot him up dude like right. that's what i thought was right. cool like the cowboy guy right it's but. been kind of, it's been kind of fun having friends be like if you think of like the parker posey or like the selma blair like the really weirdo queen in the movie my friends are always like oh that's like you and i'm like cool <laughs> i've achieved cool. i've that. graduated yeah <laughs> well, what does fashion mean to you fashion means uh self preservation honestly like I feel like I said earlier fashion has saved my life I think that fashion is yeah let's go into that a little more can we can we dive deeper into that totally how has fashion saved your life I just think that when you've lived a a way of your life for so long and it's like these restrictions and rules and limitations that either like society's putting on you or and then you put Put them on yourself too yeah Yeah. and then it's just like that repression, that lie, like, eats at you. And I always knew that there's, like, a star in here, but I cannot do it here, you know? So I definitely think that I moved... So I guess a little more about my background. Besides doing digital media, I work in TV, and the first show I ever did was Ugly Betty, mm-hmm. which was a huge show about, like, fashion, fashion. was a character, you right. know? Right. And t- to some degree, I kind of owe Betty Suarez, like, a big part of my life. Like, I know it's, like, not to like, get, like, choked up, but, oh. like, I do sort of feel like I am Ugly Betty because it's, like, I'm a career-driven girl who has, like, quirky fashion and, like... I think that once I kind of moved away, I moved to New York before LA and just seeing how everyone like just street style is like 
so amazing and I hope that everyone gets the opportunity to, to just like see people that are like killing it down the road like oh, yeah, yeah. the in runway New of New York <laughs> right, yeah, right. I mean, sure. it's like they're, everyone's just in a music video all the time yeah, and, yeah, and it yeah. really opened my eyes and even with Ugly Betty like seeing the costume department and like Patricia Fields she did um, she's basically the fashion icon behind Sex and the City mm. just seeing the way she would work with her team and like making sure every, like color was like such a part of the show mm. it really uh, woke me up and I I started to kind of dress like Betty on set and I started to feel my happiness improve, my health improve, and it, I truly believe it like resurrected me. Like I was on kind of a spiral of like anger and like confusion because I was just like, well, wait, hold on, I'm not really getting to be myself. And I'm a triple Scorpio, so I'm like... <laughs> yeah, and you hold resentment. Like, yes. you carry this resentment with you. I, and I agree, I, I can relate to that because yeah. I remember I always wanted to go into the boys' section or the men's section, mm -hmm. and it was like like in the Game of Thrones scene when you're like, shame, shame. Like, that's what I felt was <laughs> uh, being done to me as I'm walking into those sections. Oh, my god. Because I felt like this guilt, and I felt embarrassed. Like, like ah, no. Right. Or let me go look at, you know, let me go right. look at this. So I definitely can relate to you in in that sense of just having these restrictions that society puts on you and then you put it to yourself. Or yeah. when I'll bring something to like my parents and like, but that's it's a boy's shirt. I, I want it. It's sad to hear that that's what you went through, but it's also incredibly validating and freeing as an adult because coming into our friendship like seeing you as like a fashion icon knowing like now like the journey that it took to get there like it's incredibly freeing to know other people's experiences with self-expression as well because it's like it doesn't just happen overnight and all of it, it takes time it's like little parts of you can start to like change just a little bit but no and, and i think that's i mean that's awesome that you said that it's it's a part of why tony and i started this show is just to be yeah. able to connect with people to hear other people's stories and perspectives on different things so thank yeah. you for sharing you know a little bit piece of your story about how it saved your life and how fashion runs deeper than what you see on the exterior and honestly i think if you sat any two people down to talk about fashion like like, you'd be surprised, you'd be surprised how many surprised. people, like, actually care a lot about what they present to the world. It's like, yeah. you know, I will say this, like, my, I know I brought up Ugly Betty, but it was like, I was a PA on that show. And mm -hmm. I think we all know how PAs dress. Like, they wear their college sweats and, yeah. like, they yeah. look disgusting every day. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> I every day, like, dressed the part. And yeah. that is why I, I, I think believe... I saw photos, like, there was, like, you in, like, the blue, like, polo oh shirt, right? Yeah. I'll have to send you guys some pics. But, like, I definitely think that, like, here's the thing. If, like, we all dress different, right? Mm -hmm. But we all are expressing who we are every day. So it's like, as long as you're doing that, like, I truly believe that, like, your spirit and your soul, like, resonates through whatever you're wearing. Absolutely. If you feel good in it. And I think that is how you have a successful life. Like, if a hater is going to be like, oh, my God, look at that leopard print suit. It's like, I'm sorry that you're so pressed. Like, <laughs> I'm living my best life over here. <laughs> so, you hey, know. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Church. You know? <laughs> I think that's a great note to hand it over to you guys. Let us know what you think about fashion. What does it mean to you? What do you yeah. wear? That's What's your thing? What's your uniform? Ooh. Is fashion important to you? Are Let you fashion know. or are you fashion out? Yes! <laughs> I feel like everyone that watches the show is fashion, obviously. Yes! So. <laughs> like, subscribe, check out Jake's material his his nice. youtube channel is awesome what is it we'll link it channel? oh yeah it's uh jake g as in george thompson cool and then you know we are on spotify and itunes so Ooh. rate and review please yeah. and then share this with somebody yay bye guys bye. thank you guys <laughs>